Hello, 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 fellow scientists, and uh, we meet again. So um, today we want to uh, quickly have a look at Ohm's law, um, electricity, and we've been looking at electric circuits. All right, so um, if you haven't subscribed, please uh, please do the right thing. And um, uh, if you need to uh, get in touch with us, uh, please just uh, my email address uh, is on my profile so you can get in touch with me. All right, um, so what I want us to begin today is looking at circuits that have um, EMF and an internal resistance, okay? I wanna explain it just in just a few short um, uh, ways and so that you can understand exactly what happens, okay? So let's begin. All right, so when we talk about um, a battery I want you to imagine a battery to be like uh, you know I'm, I'm not very good at drawing uh, I want you to imagine it to be like a bicycle pump okay so what does a bicycle pump do all that it does is that it pumps out air isn't it okay so how does it work you simply put pressure okay onto this part of the pump so you put pressure let's call that pressure in right and what it does is that it takes air out of this outlet here and that's pressure out okay so so that's pressure in and pressure out there obviously if you were to try and model this um, as an equation you know um what would you how would you frame it you would say well i know that the amount of pressure that i put in should essentially be equal to the amount of pressure that comes out isn't it okay so pressure in is equal to the amount of pressure that comes out okay but there should be a condition there all right that's on condition that there is no amount of you know uh, holes or there's there the, there are no um you know places or areas where in some of the air can escape all right so in this case what we simply now need to do is to just make sure that this equation happens when there are no uh, um where when there are no holes and as a result there'll be no loss in pressure, okay? So the question is now, what happens if I were to have a pump, all right, let's have another pump there, okay, that has a hole in it. Let's say you punch a hole somewhere there and some of the air escapes, okay? Right, so once again, what happens? There's an amount of pressure that comes in, okay? But now, can we say that pressure in is equal to pressure out when some of it escapes there? Let's call that pressure loss, okay? Let's say there's a loss in pressure somewhere there. Can I say that pressure in is equal to pressure out? Absolutely not. All right. Why is that? Because some of the pressure has been lost in that particular place there. All right. So it means the amount of pressure that comes out would be equal to, I want you to think about it, the amount of pressure that came in minus the amount of pressure that was lost. That makes sense, right? So, it means the pressure out contributes to the amount of pressure that was lost and the amount of pressure that comes out. So now I can have an equation and say, well, it means pressure in is equal to pressure out plus the pressure that is lost. Okay, right. I hope you can, uh, uh, you are following my logic, right? So now you're probably wondering to yourself, <laughs> didn't we say we're doing electricity? What on earth are we doing with the bicycle pumps and pressure and all of that? Right, now therein lies the logic. 
when we look at a battery, I want you to imagine a, a battery as being a device that provides us with electrical pressure. Essentially, that's what a battery is, right? It provides us with electrical pressure, all right? But what happens is that a battery is designed to give you a certain amount of pressure, all right? I hope you're following. So that amount of pressure that we have in a battery is called the EMF, all right? It's called, well, the, it's an old name, uh, it's an old word that we used to use, uh, but unfortunately we've inherited it. It's, they call it the electromotive force, okay? What is the electromotive force? It is the total amount of energy that is provided by a battery per unit of charge, okay? However, when we now measure across a battery, so here we take a battery and we connect it to an external circuit, all of a sudden there's current that is passing, all right? So if our battery, for argument's sake, was designed to give us, say for argument's sake, three volts, we quickly discover, all right, now let's measure the voltage across a battery. Remember, by design, it should give us three volts. We find that there's a discrepancy between the amount that is designed for, right, that is the EMF, and the amount that is actually measured. You know, say for argument's sake, you find that it gives you 2.8 volts. Okay, now the question is, why is there this discrepancy? Okay, why is there a difference between the amount that was designed and the amount that is actually uh, uh, measured? Okay, so then we frame it this way. We say, all right, so it means there must be some energy that is lost inside the cell. All right, so there's an, an amount of potential energy that has been lost inside the cell. So we say, all right, so it means this energy, we now uh, model it as a resistor. We call that resistor the internal resistor. Now, please, I want you to note. So in this case, we say EMF, that's the total amount of energy. So I'm trying to show you where this is going to come from, right? So EMF is the total amount of energy, right? But then what is this that we measure here? It's the external voltage. This is what is actually going to be supplied to your external circuit. So we're saying EMF should therefore, you know, following the logic that we had there, uh, that pressure in is equals to pressure out plus pressure loss, right? So EMF, which is the total amount, will be the V external, external voltage, plus the lost volts, all right? So we'll call them the lost volts, the ones that were lost inside the battery, okay? So our EMF is equals to V, uh, v external, which is pressure out, plus pressure lost, which is in this case, the one that was lost. So, so far, we had looked at circuits where in uh, we assumed that there's no internal resistance. But now uh, we're going to look at circuits wherein uh, internal resistance is actually present. Now I want you to please, please quickly follow the logic that I have. By the way, just make yourself, do yourself a favor. By the way, some, some books don't use V loss, they use V internal. Just please note that is exactly the same thing, okay? Right, so now you've got EMF is equals to V external plus V loss. So, if I were to rewrite this again, right? But what is V external? Remember, we said voltage must always be with its corresponding resistance. So, if I want to use V external, if I want to find the V external, which resistor goes with the external uh, voltage? Well, it's the external resistance. So, this is when I take all of my resistors in the circuit combined, isn't it? Okay, so it's going to be R external. And by the way, which current would be moving through here? 
right? It would be the total current that is actually moving. So in this case, we simply say it's going to be I total, all right? V is equals to IR. So it's I total multiplied by R external, okay? That's how we get that V external value, all right? Plus, so now we want to find V loss, okay so remember we said we model this as an internal resistance it's something that is inside the battery okay so how do we now get this v loss we say well v loss it's going to be now which current would pass through that uh, resistor okay that's in inverted commas right because it's not actually a resistor uh, but we model it as one so it would be the total current, okay, that is passing through this internal resistor here, right? Multiplied by, we say, well, let's model it as an internal resistance and we always use small letter R for that, okay? So in this case, we say, all right, so EMF is equals to V external plus V loss, all right? So we know that EMF, we know that's, that's our total energy right v external is i times r so that's i total multiplied by r external and then um plus v loss but what is v loss it's going to be i total multiplied by the internal resistance okay so now ultimately what do we get all right i want you to see this mathematically we can actually uh just take out the common factor there which is i total okay multiplied by now i total that's going to be r external plus the internal resistance all right so um by the way this is how uh, the calculation of emf uh, will always be right so it will be i total multiplied by r external plus uh, r internal so I want you to please note, this is where this equation now comes from. Because normally in your book, they just give you this equation. Uh, even in your uh, data sheet, they give you an equation like this for EMF, right? They'll say IR plus R, uh, plus small r, right? So I want you to please note. So it means that when you use this equation for uh, EMF, which current are you going to use here, right? It is not just any current, but which current is it going to be? It must be the total current in your circuit, okay? And once again, this R here, which R are you going to use? Not just any resistor. You don't just pick any of the resistors in your circuit. You take what? You take the Intern, uh, I mean the external resistance, meaning you take all your resistors in your circuit, okay, whether in series, whether in parallel, whether it's a combination, you take all the resistors in your circuit and put them together, and that is the R that we're going to use there. And obviously, which is our small R, okay, this is the internal resistance of your circuit, okay. Once you understand this, ladies and gents, I tell you nothing else changes and i'm going to show you we're going to do a circuit just now all right and i'm going to show you nothing changes all that we've said or all that we've learned about circuits we are simply going to do as we go along okay right are you ready to start an example with me all right let's go all right so i want us to do this uh, circuit together right so here's a circuit that we're given there all right, and we're going to try and answer it um, uh, together. Right, so um, what do we have here? They say a battery with an EMF of 26 volts, okay, an unknown internal resistance is connected to the circuit. So we connect that battery with an internal resistance, uh, with an unknown internal resistance, and we've got an EMF value uh, of 26 volts. Now, I wanted to please note, we always, um, you know, sort of put those dotted lines to show you that this is inside uh, the battery. So the internal resistance is there inside, within, right? So here's our EMF value. They said it's 26 volts. 
and uh, remember what's our emf it's the total it's pressure in right and then i want you to please also note um so what is uh, the voltage reading over there it's this is now outside of the battery now we're trying to see is this value what is this value going to actually be right so that's going to be our pressure out our v external okay so in this case they tell us if the reading on v1 is 24 volts now please i want you to note so they're telling us this guy is 24 volts notice once again there is a discrepancy there's a difference between the emf value and that value there v external which is reading across the battery okay and to what do we owe that difference it is obviously because of the EM, of the internal resistance uh, that is inside the battery that pressure lost okay in this case we said uh, that pressure lost remember uh, 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 it's due to uh, internal collisions rather that are inside the cell right so in this case we're saying okay so there's our internal um, our external uh, voltage which is 24 volts and remember now this is what the battery actually delivers to the external circuit okay a battery does not deliver the emf it delivers what we actually measured out which is what the external voltage that is what it provides to the uh, um, to the cell okay so now let's have a look at uh, how we're going to answer this let's say if the reading is 24 volts now let's calculate the reading on a1 so let's analyze our circuit as we have been doing as has been our custom right so we said all right so the first thing that we're going to do let's look at what happens so we're going to be moving the total current moving out the circuit please remember that current does not uh, flow within a voltmeter at least an ideal voltmeter right because it has in, uh, um, um, infinite resistance right so we know total current uh, goes all the way so we know on a1 this is going to be the total current that is passing through a1 okay right so that's our total current there we get to this node something happens right so what's going to happen there we're going to have a current dividing right so some of the current goes there which is i1 and some of the current goes there which is i2 okay right notice once again what happens i2 passes across the 20 ohm resistor okay but the same i2 also passes across the 10 ohm resistor isn't it so same current passing through them what can i say about these two resistors they must be in series with one another okay right uh, if you find this a little bit confusing please look at my previous videos on circuits and you'll understand how we actually uh, got to this conclusion right so now um so we know that's current i1 that's passing through the 45 ohm resistor as well as uh, that emitter a2 there all right and we've got current i2 which is passing through the 20 ohm as well as the 10 ohm so we know these two must be in series with one another and note it means that the combination of these two resistors is now in parallel with the 45 please ladies and gents uh, one of the common mistakes uh, people would say you know um, this voltage here i mean uh, this uh, resistor here this 45 is in parallel with the 20 no the 45 ohm resistor is parallel with the combination of these two remember i have to add these two first right to make them in series with one another uh, so it would be 20 plus 10 um, and in this case the combination of both of them would be in parallel uh, with the 45 okay right let's not get ahead of ourselves so now let's look at how we are going to simply answer that question right so let's start with uh, our number one here okay i hope we'll have enough space so um we want the current that's passing through a1 so where do we have the most information now remember emf should go with internal resistance right and the external resistance so we don't have the internal resistance so we can't use that okay so what else are we given we are given the external voltage right 
and you remember what we said we said whenever you use voltage you must use it with its corresponding resistance right so that means this voltage here the external uh, uh, voltage which resistor corresponds to it it's obviously the external resistance so it means i must get a combination of all of my resistors in the circuit shall we do that okay so we said all right these two are in uh, uh, series with one another and by the way uh, we know at this node here i1 and i2 uh, uh, meet at this node here all right both the currents uh, uh, through those resistors meet at this point and which current should be passing through the 12 ohm resistor it should be the total current okay the combination of both i1 and i2 right so now let's try and uh, simplify our circuit so we're trying to get the total resistance there so it means i'm going to have the 45 ohm resistor and you said we should add those two resistors isn't it okay so i'm going to say 20 plus 10 that should give us 30 ohms so those two are parallel to one another can you see that okay so um by the way and we still have that 12 ohm resistor there so we've got that 12 ohm resistor over there okay so definitely we can't say um 45 ohm is in series with that why because it's not the same current that passes through them neither can i say the 30 ohm is in parallel with that uh, 12 ohm because the same current is not passing across them right so now what do i what do i do let's first find the effective resistance in parallel okay so that's 1 over r parallel that's 1 over r1 plus 1 over r2 okay so that's 1 over 45 plus 1 over 30 okay and um all right there's my calculator over there okay so that's uh, 45 uh, plus 30 okay and i get 1 over 18 so that's 1 over r parallel and very deliberately i'm leaving it this way uh, um, as 1 over 18 so that you can see or just remember uh, that you still need to invert that okay right uh, by the way i'm quite mindful there are other shortcuts or ways of doing this quicker all right but um, i'd rather follow the conventional method first and then uh, you know uh, just uh, weave in those shortcuts a little bit later on once we've mastered the art of um, solving these circuits right so now what have we done we've now reduced these two into one resistor okay what is that one resistor there it's 18 ohms okay now please i want you to note once we've made them into one resistor of 18 ohms right okay which current would pass through that 18 ohm resistor remember they are now made into one it's not going to be i1 or i2 which current is going to be passing through that definitely the total current okay so now i've got total current passing through the 18 ohm resistor but i also have the total current passing through the 12 ohm resistor that resistor over there isn't it so what can i say about those two resistors definitely it means that now my total resistance or my r external all right is going to be the combination of these two in series right sorry about that uh, this should be equal to okay now it looks like a not equal to okay so r external it's equal to um that r parallel there plus that r there which is going to be 18 plus 12 and that should give us 30 ohms so it means our effective resistance in the circuit is going to be 30 ohms so now can i calculate my uh, external um or rather my total current yes i've got my total resistance okay which is this guy over here right my external resistance and i've got now uh, my v external so i can say well it means that i total okay is v external so that's v external 
divided by r external okay which is 24 divided by um, 30 all right and I get a value of 0 0.8 MPS okay so I hope that uh, makes sense right so I get a value of 0 0.8 MPS uh, let's just verify that okay so that's 0 0.8 MPS so uh, that's how we got the total current so that's the reading on a1 so we are done with the first one and then secondly now we want to find the value of v2 okay let's check where is v2 okay so there's v2 over there so it is the voltage across the 45 ohm resistor can you see that okay so i want you to please remember what we said about resistors in parallel right so for me to get V2, uh, we said uh, resistors in parallel, by the way, we know that the voltage is the same. So it means the voltage across the 45 ohm resistor, remember which re resistors are in parallel, right? It's the 45 with the 30 ohm. So the voltage across the 45 ohm resistor should be the same as the voltage across the 30 ohm resistor, okay? So in this case, I know voltage over there is equal to voltage over there, but please remember, we said it will also be the same voltage across the 18 ohm resistor. You remember the effective parallel resistance, right? So it should be the same voltage there, right? Now I want you to note, to get the voltage there, I need the current. Do I have the current? No, I don't. Do I have the current over there? No, I don't. But I know the current that passes through that 18 ohm. You remember? So I can simply say to answer number two, right? I can say the voltage V2 would be the current that passes through the 18 ohm resistor. Which current is that? It's I total multiplied by the resistance of it. Voltage with its corresponding resistance, isn't it? So it's going to be the current there. We said it's 0 0.8, okay? Multiplied by the current uh, through the 18 ohm resistor. Okay, so that's 0 0.8 multiplied by 18 and that should give us okay whoa i just did something there so 0 0.8 multiplied by 18 okay i get a value of 14.4 volts so 14.4 volts so this is in answering number two right so we've got our value for V2. Um, and by the way, we used the 18 ohm resistor. Why? Because we didn't have the current there. We didn't have the current there. All right. So we used where we've got information. But we know that with resistors in parallel, voltage is the same. Same voltage there, same voltage there, as well as the 18 ohm, which is the effective resistance in parallel. Okay. Right. Going, moving right along. So now we want to find out what is the value of... Um, v3 the value of v3 now note remember that v3 is not in parallel with the 45 so the voltage there is not the same as the voltage there okay right um by the way there is a shorter method uh, that i can actually show you um, but I, I want to reserve that for later um for now i just want you to get the idea of these resistors in parallel and 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 uh, resistors in series right so now what am i going to do i know um uh, by the way i know what the voltage is across these two right so what i would do is let me find out what the current i2 is why because i need the current there so that i know the current that's passing across the 10 ohm resistor so let's find out the current i2 okay and remember i2 is the current that's going across the two resistors there so i'd say well the current i2 is going to be v so it's the voltage across both of them right divided by the resistance across both of them remember voltage with its corresponding resistance so that's going to be um a, a v parallel or v2 right uh, remember the voltage here is the same as the voltage across both of them right so that's going to be divided by uh, let's call it R series, okay? Right, so 
and my v2 value that's 14.4 okay divided by the combination of those two is 30 ohms okay so um i get a value of uh sorry about that there okay so i get a value of um so that's 14.4 divided by 30 okay so i get a value of 0 0.48 Let's make sure that it corresponds with what we've said so far. We said more current where there is less resistance, isn't it? So in this case, uh, this shows me I had um, 0 0.8 amperes of current, 30 ohms here, 45 there. So more current would actually go across the 30 ohm uh, resistance. Okay, so uh, this tells me that um, we're on the right track. Okay, right uh what did we do now all right so that's 0 0.48 amperes so i know 0 0.4 amperes passes through the 20 ohm but it also passes through the 10 ohm resistor so i'm looking for the voltage across the 10 ohm resistor which is v3 okay so what is that voltage value there it's going to be v3 um it's equal to i Two, which is the current uh, through the uh, through those resistors there multiplied by the corresponding resistance remember voltage with its corresponding resistor v3 is measuring across the 10 ohm resistor so in this case what do we have 0 0.48 multiplied by 10 and that should be 4,8 volts and this tells you already okay um, we already knew what the voltage is uh, across the entire circuit um, or, or rather across those two resistors right so this tells us that we can actually get the voltage um, uh, across this one resistor and therefore we would know the voltage across even the other resistor okay right so um, i hope that makes sense right all right now let's go to the next question um, right so what i'm going to do i don't know if i can squeeze it over there now in, instead you know what let me write it over here if you don't mind right so now i want to find the internal resistance um, of the circuit now how do i get the internal resistance let's go to our formula so e is equals to i into r plus small r okay uh, by the way, I hope that you've noticed that I did absolutely nothing different to how we've been tackling circuits uh, in the past, right? Over there, still the same, um, you know, logic applied for resistors in parallel, for resistors in series, and so forth, right? Now, um, we want internal resistance. How are we going to get that, right? Uh, let me just move this a little bit upwards. Right, so we want internal resistance. How are we going to get that? Right, so um, do we know our EMF value? Yes, we're given that value to be 26. Okay, so that's 26 over there. Uh, which current, by the way, are we supposed to use here? You're quite right. It's the total current, not just any current. It can't be I1, it can't be I2. It has to be the total current. Remember, we calculated that. We found it to be 0 0.8 amperes. So that's 0 0.8, okay? Sorry, I was about to write the SI units there, right? And then, which R do we use here? Not just any resistor of the circuit. Which R do we use? We use the internal, I mean the external resistance, right? We found that to be 30 ohms, do you remember? So we said R external is 30. Plus, what is the value of our internal resistance? That's exactly what we are looking for, isn't it? okay so let's do some mathematical gymnastics right i'm going to divide both sides by 0 0.8 okay so we're simply going to say so that cancels that there so that's 26 divided by 0 0.8 okay um i get 32.5 okay and then I subtract 30. Remember, when I take that to the other side, minus 30. Okay, so it means that my R internal value, 
all right so i'm going to just write it there just try to squeeze it over there so my r internal value is 2.5 ohms okay right um i hope this has been uh, quite productive you understood it okay right nothing changes by simply introducing emf and internal resistance all you just need to understand is that there's pressure in there's pressure that's out and there's pressure that's lost and once you understand that you should be able to tackle just about any circuit now in our next video we're going to be looking at circuits um, that have switches i'm going to be explaining a little bit more about switches okay and how that affects circuits and obviously we will conclude with looking at power and energy uh, uh, in resistors okay and then we'll see if we can add some more examples on circuits otherwise uh, thank you for watching uh, once again if you need to um, if you need clarity on anything you're more than welcome to hit us up okay and uh, um, email address is found in my profile and you can also just uh, throw a comment uh, for questions uh, but otherwise from me for now it's been real sharp sharp <laughs>